we are going to talk about a very important step in the 67 steps, the guidelines, the frameworks, the new ways of understanding life, the principles, the rules, whatever you want to call it, to bringing you the good life. What's the good life? Health, wealth, love, and happiness. Those goals you've been going after, the success you've been seeking. All right. I call this one the billionaire's brain and Jennifer Lopez's voice. Now, let me just say that as you go through the 67 steps, all of them are important. They work in symbiosis, right? Each one feeds off the other one. But uh, some of these foundational ones, there's a handful of them that are the most core foundational to the whole process that you're going through for the next couple months. This is one of them. The billionaire brain, the billionaire's brain, and Jennifer's, Jennifer Lopez's voice. This one, uh, whenever I'm working with people, let's say they're in my in-person apprenticeship, internship, mentor program, or I'm coaching, consulting. Uh, when people get this one wrong, it's almost impossible for them to reverse their situation, no matter how many other things they get right. So for you today. I want you to extra focus on this one, okay? And and the next couple ones. I'd say the first three or four uh, are so foundational that you get these wrong, you might as well stop, okay? So I was, I was about 18 or 19 years old. I was back in Mississippi uh, driving in the back of an old pickup truck working on a ranch there, Dr. Gordon Hazard's ranch. And there was a guy there who, who um, was one of the wealthiest people in, in Europe, and his name was Mike, and he taught me various things, but what he taught me on this one day that I'm gonna share with you has stuck with me and rings in my brain almost you know, daily, weekly, uh, even now, years later. What he said was, I was talking, the context was I was basically talking about some book I had read, and he was like, well, why do you like the book? And I'm like, well, uh, I like it because, I don't know, the author has a, I don't know, PhD or something like that. And I'll never forget what he said. He turned to me and he said, but Ty, is he worth a damn? So pardon my French there. Is he worth the damn? That was a question that he had for me. And I remember, I was like, I could still remember it as if it was yesterday going like, what's this guy talking about? What does he mean? It took me many years to kind of coalesce, I mean, for all the ideas to coalesce and for me to go, oh, I know what this guy's talking about. And I know now. I didn't know then. It was like he spoke to me in parables, you know? <laughs> and so I'm going to share with you what this means and why this is so relevant for you today. What he meant was summed up in this little book here as well. And this is why I call it The Billionaire's Brain because this guy right here, Charlie Munger, you know I talk about him a good bit. He's a billionaire. This guy that I was driving around the back of this pickup truck around this ranch, he wasn't quite a billionaire, but he was an investor that dealt with large sums of money, close to, a, I'm sure, a billion dollars or, or more. So I was like, what is this guy, Mike, in Mississippi thinking? And then years later, I read this book, and there's a famous quote in there, or I'm trying to make it famous. You may have heard me talk about it a lot if you're on my Twitter or Instagram or on my book of the day uh, newsletter. Charlie Munger said, to get what you want, you have to deserve what you want. The world is not yet a crazy enough place to reward a whole bunch of undeserving people. Well, what does that mean exactly? Well, what it means, okay, is that uh, most people in life are victims of their own making. They, you're going to learn this later in the 67 steps. They are focused on the lottery approach to life. Tomorrow's going to be better than today just because I think it's going to be better than today. They're waiting, wishing upon a star. Whereas the billionaires, whether it be Mike, Charlie Munger, they're saying things like, but is that person worth a lot? He wasn't talking about money. He, when Charlie Munger says, to get what you want, you have to deserve what you want, he's not just talking about money. 
He's talking about anything. You want to make it in Hollywood. You want to make it as a professional athlete. You want to be a good parent, a good son, good daughter, a good spouse. You want to be in shape. You want to lose 100 pounds. You know what the formula for losing 100 pounds is? To lose 100 pounds, you have to deserve to lose 100 pounds. That means no shortcuts. Doesn't mean you can't be efficient, but no shortcuts. You want to make a million dollars? Once you deserve a million dollars and you give the world a little time to catch up, there'll be a million dollars in your bank account. If you don't have the amount of money that you want, Charlie Munger would say, well, remember, my friend, the world's not yet a crazy enough place to reward a whole bunch of undeserving people. Now, I've kind of summed this up in this, you know, deserve it factor. How big is your deserve it factor? You know, like, is it a one? Is it a hundred? People who deserve a lot get a lot. Now, continuing this conversation because it gets a little deeper. What makes somebody... So if it's true what Charlie Munger says you have to deserve it, then what's the foundational thing first that makes you deserve stuff? Well, I believe it's what... Uh, I believe it was Mike was telling me. You gotta be worth a damn. What does that mean? I'm gonna sum it up in one simple word. Awareness. Awareness. How aware are you of your environment? I'll do a little test on you. If you're watching this on a computer, look down at your keyboard. Okay, you're looking at it. How many, what's the F5 button do on your keyboard? What's the F5 do? What's F7 do? What does control plus W do? Now you might say to me, Ty, what does that matter? I'm not in a computer business. Well, if you're in the modern world, you're probably using a computer. And every single day, you're looking at a keyboard. And maybe you've looked at it for thousands of times, but yet not observing enough. I know myself, I'm talking, I'm preaching to the choir. I mean, I'm preaching to myself, not just talking to you. When you walk in a room, where this is one of the 67 steps, you know, an Amish guy told me there's three kinds of people in the world. Sam Chet. He said, Ty, three kinds. People who watch things happen. People who make things happen. And people who wonder what happened. See, when you're wondering about life, which most people are, they're wondering about each and every foundational area of life. If you say to them, how many grams of protein should you eat in a day? How many grams of sugar should you maximum? That should be your maximum intake. The average person in the world, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. They wonder, I wonder, their awareness of life is low. So to deserve more, you have to start with the factor, the worth the damn, the deserve it factor. And that's made up of a whole bunch of intangible things, right? That's why I said this is a deep, one of the 67 step, this one step is something you may want to listen to more than once. I put it first because it's the foundation. You know, Warren Buffett, the business partner of this guy right here, and uh, all, for many years was the wealthiest man in the world. Not just the wealthiest, but respected, intelligent, well-read. He said he was speaking. There's a good YouTube video. You may be able to find it. I don't know if it actually it might not have been on YouTube. And he said he was speaking to a whole bunch of students, and somebody asked the question, like, what should you do with your life or how can you become how can we become successful like you mr buffett and he had a fascinating ask, answer warren buffett said back he said well i want you to imagine you're back in high school and you, there's like a magic genie and it grants you one wish and that wish is uh you will be you can choose any student in that room besides yourself and you will receive 10 percent of all the money that they make for the rest of their life, 10%. He said, how would you choose that student? Would you bet on the kid that's the captain of the football team, the valedictorian, the prettiest girl, the best looking guy? Would you, is that a good way to gauge who's gonna be the most successful in life? Would it be the kid who always gets straight A's or the kid who never does well in class and is always doing other things? It's an interesting question. Think about it for a second. 
I think for myself, I would look for a set of intangibles. It's not easy. It's remember I said I was driving in that pickup truck and I said, oh, you should read this book because it's by a guy with a PhD. But that the trappings, the outer trappings did not confuse the billionaire brain. And Mike's like, tell me more. What makes him worth it? And it's intangibles. So my question to you is, who would you bet on? And a more important question is, would you bet on yourself? You could have 10%. So if you pick the guy or a girl who's a mil gonna become a billionaire, you'll get 10%, that's 100 million bucks. Pick wrong and you'll get nothing. Who would you bet on? And that set of intangibles that you would use to select. Because remember, back in high school, you don't know for sure. There's no guaranteed way to know. It's not always the kid who comes from the best family. It's not always the kid who's the smartest. Not always the prettiest. It's not always the strongest. It's going to be one of the next 67 steps, what Professor Meganson said on Darwin. Darwin's theory, it's not the strongest or the most intelligent that survives the most changeable. In this case, what we're talking about today is the set of intangibles that increase your deserve it factor. The question is, would you bet on yourself? And if not, why not? And then all you got to do is change those things and your deserve it factor goes through the roof. Now, the intangible trait, because there's lots of intangibles, right? There's courage and there's patience and there's perseverance and there's, uh, you know, uh, wisdom and there's uh, focus and all intensity, all these things. The one that I would look at first, and I'm going to tell you why I, I select this. I would look for uh, awareness. Now, I'm in Mensa and they put out a little journal on human intelligence. And I remember years ago reading, I said, if you have a child and you want to know if they're exceptionally intelligent or gifted, but they're only two or three years old, how will you know? And they, they gave a very interesting answer. They said, look at kids in a, like three-year-olds, all toddlers in a pre preschool or whatever. And they said, which of the kids makes observations that nobody else in the room notices? They say that's the best indicator in that, in whatever, this is just one study, the best indicator of future potential. You see, awareness is the quickest path to increasing the intangibles, to increasing what you deserve, to increasing your worth a damn factor. So uh, I was around the same time that I was in Mississippi, I was at Joel Salatin's farm my first mentor, one of my first mentors. And Joel Salatin's a fast walker. We're walking through this farm and uh, Joel Salatin goes, and I used to like, we walk, I would like in this phase, I had read this book about like being really in touch with nature, Tom Brown. And so I was like, just like looking at the grass and all this. And Joel turned to me, he's like, you realize we just walked by where the cows were and the gate is open. I was gonna see if you were gonna say something, Ty, because those cows are gonna get out and I said, oh, I was just focused on the big picture. I wasn't focusing. Uh, he said to me, he said, Ty, there's a time to stop and smell the roses, and the time isn't now. What was he saying? Ty, your awareness factor is low. You're one of those people, you're not making things happen. You're not watching, even observing, and going, oh, I noticed that, but it, I'm going to leave it, the gate open. It's okay. No, I was wondering. I would, my suggestion to you, the first, simplest, intangible for you to focus on is a massive awareness of life. I just read Helen Keller's book. It's an amazing book because Helen Keller, if you know the story when she was around 19 months or something like that, she got, I think it was meningitis, some fever. And that fever uh, caused her to lose her sight, lose her hearing. She basically lost all her senses and went into darkness. But she became, if you read Helen Keller, I don't know why I've never read more of her stuff. She's amazing. Amazingly good writer, amazingly insightful. And she began to perceive the world with the only real sensory uh, tool she had left, or the main one, which was touch. And she was so aware of the world that she lived a complete life without, all even, uh, without even these senses that you and I have, without all of them. That blows my mind because I know people and I know times in my own life where I have all my senses and I'm not aware, I'm not truly living life. 
I think some of it is like Freud says, the pain of life is often too hard for us. So we seek substitutions. We seek intoxicants. We seek uh, diversions from reality. If you want to succeed, you're going to have to be focused on now. Now, there will be a time, and we'll talk about that. I talk about it if some of you are in my business programs. I have the white to belt. A black belt program, the academy, the mini MBA, the inner, inner circle. I talk about, you know, this idea of setting aside time. To there is a time to let your mind wander and not focus, right? Joel Salatin didn't say to me, "There's a time to stop the roses," and it's never, or there's never time to stop the spell of roses. He said, "There is a time, but the time isn't now." You can't live a life where every single day you see your keyboard, but you don't ever know what all the buttons do. That would take five, ten minutes. It would rewire your brain to increase the curiosity factor. Now, we're going to talk about this even more in one of the other 67 steps. Uh, we'll talk about the Sherlock Holmes factor. So what I'm talking about today, I'm not going to just talk about the awareness factor because that's only one of a multitude of intangibles that you must possess. Okay, uh, But it certainly is immensely important. As I said, there's these other ones. And many of the things you're about to go through over the next 67 days basically are the encompassment of this concept of intangibles. To get what you want, you have to deserve what you want. Most people I know, like I said, complain about externals. And I'm like, no, the world's fair, man. You have $100 in your bank account because money represents reciprocal altruism in most cases and you haven't been doing much for the world, so the world's not going to give you much back. You work at McDonald's, let's say. People there, they're making 8 bucks an hour. Now, you might say they should be paying more, whatever, 10 bucks an hour. And, and I'm not going to have a political conversation about minimum wage. That's not what this is about. What I'm saying is no matter how you slice it, a surgeon is going to make more than someone who just presses buttons. They're not adding a lot of value. In fact, they're almost like almost a job that can be replaced by robots, which it already is. You know, you can order your own movie tickets now. They don't need people anymore. Now, you might lament that and say, oh, that's a horrible thing. It's not necessarily. What it's saying is you and I have to continually be on an upward path to deserve more and more and more. You want to be in better shape? Well, what are the things that make you deserve better shape? Would you want to live in a world where the rules and laws of physics don't apply? So how unfair would this world be? Arnold Schwarzenegger, he lifts weights six hours a day. He eats healthy. Now I know he did some steroids. and Just go with me here on the analogy, the metaphor. Would you want to live in a world where he does all that hard work and his body just stays fat and then somebody who eats McDonald's all the time magically becomes healthy? I wouldn't want to live in the, that world because there wouldn't be the rules. I wouldn't then know what I had to do. You know, I like I got to fly to Germany this week doing a uh, speaking tour. I don't want to live in a world where sometimes the rule of physics don't apply like the plane I want to know if the plane goes a certain speed, five, six hundred miles an hour, and has the wing shaped and the weight that it's going to take off and fly and get me to Germany without crashing. I don't want erratic rules. I want a world with enough rules that I can plan my life and I can plan and know, okay, you're saying all I have to do to be healthy and be in shape is cut out processed food, eat more vegetables, move and work out, find some sport that I like and move, burn some calories. That's all I have to do to basically maintain health? Okay, so I'll be healthy when I do those things. Those will increase my deserve it factor. If I'm worth a damn, I'm looking at my body, I'm aware, I'm like, you're not looking so good, buddy. Time to make a change. Time to deserve more. Now, when it comes to wealth, you might say, well, why does Bill Gates have whatever, 40, 50, 60 billion dollars when most of the world doesn't. Now, obviously, that's a loaded question. You could say nobody deserves that much more and, and you might be right. What I will say is 
he's added immense value to the world, brought computers to the world, him and Steve Jobs. From age 12 to age 31, 19 years, he focused down doing stuff that was not just adding value to himself, but adding value to the world. It took him 19 years to become a billionaire. He said from age 20 to age 30, I didn't even take one day off, not even one. I think he deserves the respect uh, that anyone who adds that much value to the world deserves. Maybe he doesn't deserve $60 billion, but he certainly deserves more than I, than me. I don't deserve as much as him. Nelson Mandela, the man was basically, you know, falsely accused of something uh, or unjustly put in prison for 27 years. I think I wouldn't have been able to handle that. 27 years, he stayed on track mentally. He forgave those people. And he said, I'm going to do big things when I get, came out. And you know what he did? He got a Nobel Peace Prize. He stopped, ended apartheid in South Africa. When he died on the day he died, the world wept. Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, they lived with such intention and such purpose. And with so many intangible factors, their worth it factor was through the roof. Their deserve it factor was through the roof because I didn't, I haven't withstood injustice for 27 years, locked in a cage. I just read his book and saw that movie that came out. You know, he died sadly recently. I would have loved to have uh, met him. I didn't ever get the chance because I would love to be around somebody like that that deserved it so much. He deserved all of the Nobel Prize and all of the respect he had from world leaders. See, when I get around people, and you're going to learn this in one of the, so the next talks, um, I talk about rich friends, poor friends, successful friends, my non-successful friends. The difference is, for the most part, my non-successful friends don't deserve the success my successful friends have. You can take heart and take courage to know the world is much more unfair than the media has told you. Much more, un, uh, I'm sorry, is much more fair than the media has told you. Much more fair than conspiracy theorist friends you might have and people who lament the state of the world. I was just reading Will Durant, the great uh, Nobel Prize winner in literature, who spoke of, uh, he had a book called uh, The Meaning of Life. It's one of the most profound books you'll ever read. Let me see if I can pull it up here on my phone. I'll, I'll read you a chapter which is relevant to this factor uh, of this deserve it factor and how, how uh, what's the word? How um, fair the world is despite all the lamentations and, and what people say about how unfair it is. It's fair. It, it, it's not always fair. Let me just be clear on that. But it's a heck of a lot more fair than it's ever been. So let me read you this if I can find it here. So it's truly, if you do not read, by the way, Will Durant, uh, you got to read it. it. Actually, I don't have it on this computer here. He says that at what other time would you rather have lived? A thousand years ago? You know, they were chopping people's head off, set, burning them at the stake for the small, for thinking you were a witch. No, we live in a time now where it's not perfect and it never will be perfect. They call that human acquisitiveness. Greed will always be somewhat with us. Maybe rightfully so. Our genes remember times when we didn't have a lot. I'm going to try to download this while we talk. By the way, a lot of you asked me about how I do books. I like physical books like this, but man, I love also backing them up. I usually buy uh, both of them. And the reason I do is because I look for quotes and things. I read this book, but then I will, uh, you know, actually look up quotes. Like if I can't remember, I'll be like, ah, let me see if we have this book. No, they don't even have it on here. Once in a while, the books I read are a little bit uh, not as well known. But he says the meaning of life, you can take satisfaction in the times we live in today, where they're not perfect, 
but we're moving probably in the right direction in many areas. And one of those ways is in the equal, in the equality. And I don't mean equality in a socialistic way, where everybody gets the same. Karl Marx's experiment with communism, socialism, at this point doesn't seem to have worked very well. So you wouldn't necessarily want a world where everybody had exactly the same. I do believe all people should have the right to be independent and have a good life. That I believe. But just like, you know, I'd rather watch Michael Jordan play basketball than watch myself play basketball. The world's not completely fair in the sense that you might understand fair. But what I'm saying is the world is fair in the sense that you usually get what you deserve. People who deserve more get more. So in every area of your life, as you go through these 67 steps, anytime you're hitting a wall in any area of your life, I want you to start not by talking about recession, not by talking about uh, business partners that stole from you, not by talking about people who owe you money, not by talking about business, uh, 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 a business that you launched that the world wasn't ready for and you were too far ahead of your time. I want you to talk about health issues. We all have health issues. I don't want you to talk about traumas. Most people have tremendous traumas in life. I mean, look at the stats. On I was just had a party and there was a girl there that I was talking to and her parents were killed or actually her her dad shot her himself and uh, her mother right in front of her. Tremendous trauma. But so did Nelson Mandela, 27 years locked in a cage, basically, for really doing nothing except fighting for equality. Um, what you do, what you do now, this is yours. I'm going to read you. There's something I'll read you. I posted this. And like I said, this first of the 67 steps is a little more broad because I want to talk about kind of you know, I'm kind of setting the stage for all the intangibles while giving you this one to work on, this one awareness factor, this how much do I deserve? That's probably what I'm going to get. Now, I'm going to read you an interesting story. In that book with Will Durant, there is a quote. He wrote out a letter to people around the world, okay? The great thinkers, Bertrand Russell, Mahatma Gandhi, replied on the meaning of life. So, so a letter came back from a man sentenced to life in prison in Sing Sing Prison, a very famous prison. He was asked what the meaning of life was. He answered with these amazing words, I do not know to what great end destiny leads us, nor do I care very much. Long before that end, I shall have played my part, spoken my lines, and passed on. How I play that part? is all that concerns me. In the knowledge that I am an inalienable part of that great, wonderful, upward movement called life and that nothing, neither pestilence, nor physical affliction, nor depression, nor prison can take me away from my part, lies my consolation, my inspiration, and my treasure. Notice the key line there. How I play that part in life is all that concerns me. I want you to play a bigger part in the world. I want you to have more skills, both intangible, those character skills, pers perseverance, patience, wisdom, all of those things that you will need. Focus, awareness, the ability to know when is the time to stop and smell the roses and when is the time to notice what's on the keyboard. I want you to be someone who goes, yeah, we will live in a traumatic world. And in the midst and in spite of that traumatic world, I'll deserve more. If I want more money in my bank account, I'll start by deserving more. What makes you deserve more money in your bank account? Well, understanding money. Literally, you want to have a better relationship with a friend? You better understand them. That's one way to increase your deserve it factor around money. And it starts with awareness. You have to be aware that you're in a conversation. You want a better body? It starts with a conversation with your body, which starts with awareness, I tell people. 
You want to fix your body? Stand naked in a mirror alone one morning, every morning for the next 90 days, the next 67 days. You don't like what you see? And be objective, don't have neurosis. Either way, don't be overly critical or undercritical. Health is important. Look at yourself and go, do I like what I see? Well, I probably deserve what I have right now. I've been eating junk food. I haven't been exercising. I've been eating processed food. This body that I have, I probably deserve it. Can't blame your parents. I was just reading uh, and talking with Dr. Sharon Mullen for the book Inheritance, one of the premier geneticists of our time. He's going, look, even despite your genes, your genes epigenetics, they can morph, they can change. To get what you want, you have to deserve what you want. The world's not yet a crazy enough place. You want the body of a athlete? What does an athlete do? My friend Edon Ravine, he trains some of the top pro basketball players, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Chris Paul, Carmelo Anthony. And he said, you know what he said to me, Ty? He said, when all, everyone else is just posting on their Facebook wall, workout pictures, <laughs> their occasional once a month going to the gym, he's like, LeBron James is up every single morning at four or five in the morning, working out. He's deserving it. Now, obviously he was born with some genetic capabilities that not all of us have, six foot eight, 280 pounds, 6%, 7% body fat, whatever it is. Yeah, that, that all of us have a different capacity, okay? I'm not naive about that. You don't need to be naive. Uh, the great John Wooden, if you've seen his TED Talk, it's what I think is the best TED Talk I've ever seen. He gives it like 95 years old when he's in a wheelchair. And he was the great UCLA coach who won the most basketball championships in U.S. college basketball in history, men's basketball. And he says, you know, not everyone was born Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Not everyone's born. God only made one Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he said, the great basketball player, seven foot two. He said, you're in a competition with yourself. You're not in a competition with the world. I probably can never do anything that makes me as good as investing as the natural mathematical genius of Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger. But I can deserve more than I have now, and that's my goal. So what do you do? Well. To increase your deserve it and worth the damn factor, you increase your awareness, which is the fun, uh, the fundamental foundation of everything. You become aware. You're no longer wondering about life. You're no longer blaming life. You're focused in. And then you do like Charlie Munger says. Each day, you go to bed a little wiser. Step by step, you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. That's why you'll notice I didn't put a three steps to being successful. There's 67 and I've compiled them and like put a few of them together. It's really about 200 steps you're about to learn. I've just kind of, as you notice in this one, I'm kind of bringing a couple of them together. I'm bringing the worth a damn, the deserve it, the awareness factor. Now, I'll talk about Jennifer Lopez's voice. Oftentimes people will hear me talk about this and try to find examples of where it's not incorrect and go, hey Ty, Jennifer Lopez, Hollywood, there's people, there's stars there that don't deserve it. Well, it's interesting. I live up here in the Hollywood Hills. There's movie stars. and Ben Stiller the other day, I was playing basketball in my front yard, almost ran me over with his car. White BMW it was funny. Came around the corner flying, and then I was like right in the middle of the street, and he stopped, and he gave me the Zoolander look, I'm pretty sure. And uh, you would think, you know, there's a common thing. Oh, Ben Stiller, he got lucky, or he's not that funny. I know funnier people are... Jennifer Lopez, she's not that, you know, she's she's famous singer, but she's not a very good singer. She doesn't deserve it. Well, just remember, just remember, it's not that simple. Because my experience is these celebrities are amazing at what they do. J-Lo might not be the best voice, but you see, to get what you want is not always just one thing. It's not always just a perfect voice because... Opera singers have great voices, but that's not what society wants at all times. Sometimes they want to be entertained. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as it's within reason. J-Lo uh, is entertaining. She dances. She picks the right music. She performs. And ultimately, most pop music is not just about 
you know, the chords of music. There's only a few chords they're playing. It's not like Bach or Beethoven or Brahms or something. It's simple music. So what people want, if you want to deserve to be a pop star, you have to be aware of what people want. And obviously, they don't just care about voice because J-Lo's voice is, you know, it's not horrible. But she would have never been an opera singer. She would have never been a, even a trained, you know, amazing uh, soloist. So don't ever fall into the trap of making specific rules too quickly. Don't go, oh, well, okay, to make a million dollars, I have the, the rule of the universe is that I have to be really good and natural with math. Well, I'm not sure that's what the deserve it factor is. I suggest to you that you start with all the set of intangibles, beginning with number one, awareness. Now, if you want a list of these, you can look at like, you know, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates. They kind of have this list of character traits. I can Google them with you. I, I don't have them all memorized. I've talked about some of them. I'll, I'll show you. Now, you can go through these. There's a lot of them. I don't know that it's that important to build all of the intangibles. Uh, let's see. Aristotle. Character. Character traits. Here's some of them. All right. Let's see if I can find them. Moral character. I remember, when I say moral character, I'm not talking exactly like and Aristotle wasn't talking about this either so it's not necessarily like morality and like you and I grew up in you know like don't steal don't that's that's not what they're talking about they're talking about something much different okay they're talking about a set of traits I like to call them the intangibles all right let's see if I can find them they have a whole long list. Now, interestingly enough, and I, I'm not going to go too much into this, uh, Aristotle considers it balance. He says to be angry is easy, but to be angry at the right person, at the right time, for the right reason, for the right duration, with the right intensity, that's difficult. So maybe we can add, after the intangible of awareness, maybe it's balance because... Jennifer Lopez, her voice isn't a 10, but when you add in all the other intangibles, she balances out into something that deserves a heck of a lot of success. If you want to be a, a pop star like J-Lo, you got to be able to put together that whole package just like that. Start with awareness though. Many people, like I said, they're not even aware of the fact that she is talented at all this other stuff. It's start hard to stay at the top of the pop charts, you got to know some business. You have to know some PR. You have to know who to surround yourself with. The lawyers, the the uh, agents, the managers, the tour guy. You know the people that put together the tours, the recording studio people. It's a lot harder than you think. I mean, I sometimes I'm like, oh, I could do that. No, no. And the mark of a true professional, they make it look easy. You watch Michael Jordan play basketball. Every time I watch him, I'm like, I swear I could go out and do this tomorrow. But I can't. It's hard. But step by step, you can get ahead. Step by step, you can do these things. As you go through each of these 67 steps. I want you to think of it in the context of I said, you're in a room. All your high school class is together. There's someone out there, and they're picking who they want to bet on. I want that person to be you. Whenever you would bet on yourself in an area, that's when you know you're on the right track. If I was in that room looking at people to bet on, I would look for who's aware, who knows what's going on, who's sharp. Then I would look for the next, who's focused, who's balanced, who's wise and discerning of these students yeah give me 10 percent of that kid over there that's what i want i want that to be you now in closing i want to talk about the flip side of this what's the opposite because charlie munger says stop trying to think of what uh will increase your deserve it factor what will make you work deserve more he said invert 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 it's a classic tool of logic to prove something he said what is it and who is it that you wouldn't bet on and make sure you're not that person it's not always what will make you successful but what's guaranteed to not make you successful 
Well, I would say very low awareness because you'll never know what you need to change. I think it was Donald Rumsfeld talks about there are no knowns, that is to say things that we know we don't know or that, that we know they know, we know. And then there are known unknowns, that is to say there are things we know that we don't know. But then there are unknowns, unknowns, unknown unknowns, meaning things we don't even know we don't know. And those are the Achilles arrow that hit you in the heel. You're doing everything right, but the lack of awareness you might have around health. I know a guy that's billionaire, but yet he's so out of shape, so unaware of what it takes to deserve physical health that he's in bed sick all the time. Would you wanna have that body? Would you wanna have that life even if he had $2 billion but you couldn't get out of bed to enjoy it? He was never aware, his awareness factor was too low. Should have looked himself in the mirror before he was hundreds of pounds overweight. He should have stopped smelling the roses and come back to reality. Been focused, been balanced in what he did. This is the Achilles heel. So as you invert, don't just think about what will make you successful. Go, what will make me unsuccessful? I think it's lack of awareness at the very base. There's other things too. But make sure you flush those out of your system day by day. It is not the economy. It is not a good business idea. That's a myth. People go, oh, I'm gonna be a billionaire. I got a good idea. Ideas don't make you rich. In fact, most people who are wealthy did not have the original idea. Sam Walton, the richest of all business people of our time, $160 billion net worth. You think he invented discount retailing? No, they were already there. He just did them a little better. He was aware, he was so aware. He spent all his time at his competitor's store figuring out what they're doing, being aware. What? How are they selling? When he built Walmart, that's how he built it to what may become one of the first trillion dollar companies. See, awareness factor, and we're gonna talk about this later in a step about Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso said, good artists copy, great artists steal. That starts with an awareness of who is a great artist. Who can you take from? ideas and amalgamate them all into your own unique formula for success. So I want to ask you a handful of questions here that's important. Now just remember the way this goes to complete a lesson. Okay. Uh, you got to answer these questions on this page right here. I also recommend you have a 67 steps private notebook pen and paper that you're writing called your 67 steps success guide write that thing out okay you do that privately but here in this community there's a tremendous power of you putting that out there right here on this page below the video uh writing out there your intentions your goals interacting with other people seeing what other people this is part of a community it's not just me talking to you it's everybody learning from each other that's vitally important okay so as you go through this every lesson and this is the first 67 step Make sure you answer these questions and, and do it well. But I'm only asking for 67 days that you trust me on this. If it doesn't work, if these ideas of the world's greatest mind do not help you, then you don't need to keep doing it. But it will help you. It will. What else could happen from learning and downloading the thoughts, experience, wisdom, consciousness of the world's greatest, most impactful people throughout history? So. The first question is, you know, what's your plan to start deserving what you want from life in health, wealth, love, and happiness? We didn't get too much into social and love, but just remember, you want more friends, you gotta deserve more friends. If you're an unfriendly person, you don't deserve a lot of friends. If you're too shy and too timid, well, nobody wants to spend time around somebody who never interacts back. You wanna be happier, deserve more happiness. Mother Teresa said, everybody in the world wants to be happy. Most people are depressed because they go inward. She said, you got to go outward and do things for other people. That'll make you. That's how Jonathan Haidt is the author here of Happiness Hypothesis. I was talking to him on the phone not too long ago. And he said, you know, the mind is like a beehive. We have a hive mentality. That's how we're hardwired. We have to feed off the things that we do for other people. And this is what can make us happy. All right, so what are the things you can do? Give some practical things you can do to start deserving all that success that you want, health, wealth, love, and happiness. The second thing, 
one to ten, what is your awareness slash deserve it slash worth a damn factor? One to ten. One to ten. And why you think it is that way and how you can increase it. Okay? Number three. Would you bet if you could go back in high school, see yourself, would you have bet on yourself over every other kid in there? Be honest. And if the answer is no, what do you have to do today? You can't change the past. The past is an illusion. Stephen Hawking talks about in History of Time. Or, I'm uh, sorry, in the book uh, Grand Theory. Or, no, Theory of Everything. Sorry. He says, you know, time is an illusion. Time's an illusion. Time's measured three ways, cosmologically, psychologically, and thermodynamically. And he said it always moves forward. So let's not worry about back past. I'm not trying to bring up past pain. I'm just saying, would you have bet on yourself? And what do you have to do now that you would be the person that you would bet on? Write the answer to these three things, okay? Very important. Now in these next 67 steps, we're gonna get more and more specific. This is a little bit of a broad one. I had to set the stage. I want you to adopt the billionaire's brain, even if you don't want to become a billionaire. Even if you just want to change the world, eradicate poverty, change your family, change your happiness. I want you to do it by asking yourself, but, but are you worth it? Do you deserve it? Okay. And every day we go to bed a little bit wiser over the next 67 days and that factor goes up and then Almost, I don't believe in magic, but it almost will feel magically. Success will start coming to you. It's not just a mentality. You got to combine actions, thoughts, character development, all these things into one. All right. So uh, leave the answer here. Spend some time. And then uh, I'm excited. I will see you on the next 67 step. All right. Talk to you soon.